Hey everybody, welcome to Kimmel's Irish Pub. Time for another movie review. Tonight's movie, Sick. Um, so, it came out just recently. It's on Peacock, I had no idea. Uh, again, TikTok um, brought it out to me. 6.2 on IMDb, 4,475 people have um, rated it so far. It's about a group of friends who get together during the pandemic and then uh, they get hunted by a killer of some sorts. Uh, Mark Menchata. I think his name is. I don't know. I know I've seen him a couple of different times in some weird things. And that's it, man. That's that's all I recognize from the IMDb stuff. But it's only an hour and 23 minutes long. It happens to be a Friday night. I uh, went out for dinner, so it's okay. Uh, normally I watch longer films, but uh, this will fit in nicely tonight. So i um, mildly excited to see what it's about. But let me get into it, find out what it's about, give you a better idea, and let you know what I think. Stick around, I'll be back. Hey everybody, wanna do a quick or no, we're not doing a quick check in. I wanna we're at the credits. I'm sick. Man, I'm just messing up this whole review. My review is not sick in the cool sense. But um Gideon Eldon, that's our main character. Her name is Parker, and that's how I'm going to refer to her real quick. So we're at the credits, no check-in. I mean, it was a pretty quick movie, an hour and 23 minutes, and no reason to check in. And uh, start off with what I kind of like about it. I think it is uh, happy Peacock put this out uh, with Blumhouse, so that's kind of cool. Uh, kind of cheating, because Miramax was the producing. You know, anyway. Um, but... Uh, you know, I, I like that they, they make their own movies that we can watch streaming. We don't have to go to the theater, that kind of stuff. I like that. I like the creativity. I, I like... Uh, it's bad, but using the pandemic, a recent event, um, to create a movie around, create a plotline around, um, that could be somewhat interesting. So I, I do like that, right? Um, and then I liked it. It was an hour and 23 minutes long. And that that's it for me, you know? Um, I'll tell you also what I don't like. What I what, so it starts off with uh, this our, our Parker, um, rich girl drives a Range Rover, and uh, she's there. There uh, school's out probably due to the quarantine, right? So she's supposed to quarantine alone. She takes a friend. Um, not even sure the friend's name. Very uh, minimal um, character development with that friend. I mean, there's minimal character development with everybody. But I couldn't even tell you, I forget her name. But uh, they go up to this cabin, right? And it's not a cabin. It's a log mansion, right, in the, in the woods that, that stays vacant like year-round. So, you know, you've you got this this uh, rich kid who drives a Range Rover from school up to her vacant cabin um, in the middle of wherever. And they're supposed to quarantine together. And uh, the one girl probably takes a quarantine a little bit more seriously than Parker. Um, anyway, um, it starts off actually with it. It's, it, it it reminds you kind of Scream. It's got this uh, like, and they allude to this right in the beginning. A murder happens with a guy who's very similar to Ghostface without the mask. Right, instead of a mask, it's just like a ski hat and a thing like that. But moves around, uses a knife. Same mo, right? Same character. Whatever, this guy gets it right in the beginning, and then they flash to these rich kids going up to their log mansion for quarantine. And um, and then, so they're there, and what happens is, essentially, her, uh, I don't know how to say it, a boy who admires her shows up there. DJ, my favorite character, right, who, who is really likes Parker. Um, and, he, and he drives all the way out there. It seems like it was a long way based on what they say uh, to profess his love. Obviously, Parker, yeah, she ain't got time for that. She's got other guys on the side and all that kind of stuff. It was never serious. So you could tell how much the, this whole, the whole character just bothered me. You know what I mean? I just did. That's the other thing. Like in, in, in movies like this, you want to kind of like the characters and root for them. I didn't root against I wasn't really rooting for it, so it, it kept me involved in like everything that was going on. I wasn't like, hey, let's make sure Parker, you know, no, not like that. So you know that. So I didn't like that um, at all. 
Um, and so then, you know, like I said, so fast forward, the ghost character, ghost face character, the, the Scream wannabe character ends up at the cabin, right? And so the three of them are at the cabin and this starts to happen. And, uh, you know, they're fighting for their lives like they would in a movie, like similar Scream, um, and, and doing all that. So the big question is, what's going on? Why is this? Why is, there are some text messages, two or three, that kind of hint you in like, you know, hey, uh, like when, do you want to play a game? Instead of that, it's a text message like, hey, are you enjoying your vacation? Very similar. It's the same instead of back when they created that, when they did it with phones, now they're doing it with um, text and Snapchat. So it's a, it's a, a blatant ripoff of the entire thing. Um, <laughs> ah, wow, I, I just realized another rip off of the whole it, it, I'm sorry let me back up to the beginning so this movie is scream during the pandemic without the ghost face period done end of story you can stop watching now if you want to but if you want to continue to hear me rant about this movie stick around um, but yeah so that's that's really what it is I, and I thought forward a little bit more that I, I won't share everything with you but if you've seen those movies this is it um, but I like the characters in Scream. Not so much in this one. Uh, let me see. Did I leave anything? I'm sure I left something else out. But um, there's a lot of... Like, oh, why wouldn't you do this? You know, though, that, but that happens a lot in these kind of scary slasher films. Um, and I thought about this real quick. And then I'll, I'll, I'll get into a spoiler thing. I just want to say one thing. But before I get there, I think to myself, like, you know in all of these kinds of movies and not singling this one out because this is very um, common you know you knock the person the, the actual killer out right and then you know and, and in this one they do a really good job and you would think okay down and out right so why don't they take the final blow and I think they should throw in like a little dialogue right there you know maybe the two of them are standing there and this happens and so-and-so is on the ground, ghost-faced, whatever. And it's like, just end them. You know, just take the knife and, and do it, right? So that way you're not going to wake back up like they do. And maybe a little dialogue right there would be like, you know what? I don't have it in me to do that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I have it in me to hit them for survival. But at this point, like, it's like, I can't cross that line. I think that would help a lot. To make it a little bit more believable because I'm sitting there like, just do something. Because you know he's going to sit right up and come right after you kind of thing. Uh, but that's a whole, that's just, that has nothing to do with this film. Um, but, but you know, in the same sense. So, there you go. Um, there was one other thing, but I, I, I'm going to jump in. Maybe I'll remember it. If you, if, I mean, you know all you need to know about this film. Um, check it out if you want to. I'm surprised it was ranked as high as it was. Um, there's not a lot here besides, you know, Scream. But... Let me get into a little bit more in, in depth here on some things I want to share. So spoiler alert, spoiler alert, spoiler alert. Thank you for sticking around. I appreciate it. If you don't want to hear a little bit more about the movie, please jump off. You already know what the movie's about. But just like Scream, it's the same thing as Scream. Like what happens at the end of Scream? How many people were involved? You know what I mean? Like, really? The other, yeah. Oh, I know what I was going to say. And I don't think I want to say it now. I mean, the, the... I'll say it this way, and this isn't really a spoiler thing. I'm surprised they released this movie when they did. What's going on right now? And maybe it's, it's more my awareness of what's going around in other states and things like that. Um, it just seems a little too close to home that they release this movie at this time. Um, and I get it. I mean, everybody wants to make a buck and everybody wants to get movies out there. And I remember there was a there's another movie, the um, Phone Booth. If you remember that one, that was a Colin Farrell. They held the release of that because of certain reasons that were happening in in the United States at that time. Um, look that up. I don't want I don't want to get into too much detail, but like this is, I think a really poor decision for Paramount to release this film now. You know, um, I just, you know, I couldn't I couldn't stop thinking about that like. And as much as I appreciate they, they launch films like this and 
and, and they allow us to see them at home, and I appreciate that, like, not a good time, and then to make it available, like, you can't even, you don't even have to go to the movies, like, I, I just think that uh, very poor taste and poor decision making right there, in my opinion, and, and the movie's just a blatant ripoff, so, I mean, thumbs down on this one, now that I'm, I'm through it, so if you stuck with me this wrong, sorry, I don't normally do this, uh, but I really feel I needed to, um, hopefully a lot of people stuck with me and saw this last piece because I think it's important. Maybe it's not. Maybe I'm just on my soapbox. I don't know. Thanks you. Thank you for tuning in. I'm going to end it here. Um, hopefully you got something out of this rant. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. Kimmel's Irish Pub.